Hey guys, Carl here, ready for another video tutorial. Today we're going to be making this cool safe lock. I saw this picture on a website and I thought it would be cool to make it in 3D, so here's what I have. Good stuff, good stuff. Alright, so we're going to be modeling this in 3D Studio Max. And then we're going to jump into a bit of Photoshop for making the dial image. And finally, we're going to be rendering using V-Ray. Alright, so let's do it to it. I'm in Max with my standard Max start file, where, as you saw, I had a bunch of primitives. And in this case, we're just using the cylinder. So I'm just adding some bevels and I'm going to basically make a little inset in the very middle uh, delete the back section like that and just use the inset section in the middle as the safe lock part and so like it is now zoomed in it's just gonna look like it's part of a safe door even though I'm not making the entire safe door so I'm just working on it um, modeling you know I We'll refer back to the reference image every now and then, but I'm not going for perfect likeness, so I'm just basically going to make something that looks similar. So just, you know, adding bevels, my usual routine, um, scaling up and down, that sort of thing. And slowly we're going to make this thing look like the safe lock. So a couple of tips on modeling. Um, generally I use the wireframe toggle a lot so I think the default is F4. You just hit F4 all the time to bring up the wireframe and of course I'm using Turbo Smooth which is my usual MO because I, that's just what I'm used to. You can use polygons if you want but I think Turbo Smooth is a really good idea. Makes it pretty easy. So with Turbo Smooth, I think the default options I have set is the isoline view, which is good when you have the wireframes on. It's you know you don't see all the individual polygons it's making; you just see the cage shape. So that's what I have here. I'm just adding a chamfer around the edge because you need those control edges to sharpen it up. That's how Turbo Smooth works. You don't just make the shape in polygons and then hope it smooths out right you need to add all sorts of control edges to make sure it keeps its shape with the turbo smooth on and I noticed on the reference image there's sort of this crease which I'm working on now I've just chamfered it and you can see that's made the crease like that and so later on the difficult part actually in this case was making the knob in the middle because it has all these hundreds of little indentations for sort of grip and that I sort of did fairly differently to how it is on the reference image um, you'll see what I do I mean on the reference image it's sort of indentations in my case I basically added a ton of boxes which sort of looks similar but anyhow we'll get to that at the moment I'm still just basically beveling a lot because this is just really one big bevel shape it's just a lot of bevels to match the shape and at the moment I would say the middle part is too small but I'll probably get to that and with bevel I actually have a hotkey set but I pretty much never use it because you want to bring up the little interface and you know use the individual controls I think it's um, inset and height or something like that and if you right click the little spinner next to those controls um, it sets it to zero so what you can do a lot is bring up the bevel controls and then do an inset then right click apply then right click to set it to zero and then do a height bevel so you do two separate bevels and that's generally how I achieve the shapes so it's looking pretty good at the moment I'm working on the grip like I said I'm gonna use a big uh, radial array of boxes so I'm making the original box 
and I'm just going to turbo, uh, actually I'm not going to turbo smooth it, I'm going to just use M smooth in this case, and that, you know, we'll keep it as polygons because it's just a really simple little shape. So, um, I've drawn out a box, converted it to editable poly, and just moving it into position, uh, you know, scaling and rotating. When I'm happy with the position, I'm going to add a couple of connect edges, just like that, and now select all by pushing 5, and hit M smooth. And so that just makes it more of an organic shape, and it's not so boxy anymore. And now, this is the fun part. We set the coordinate center to world, and I'm in the front view, and that has set the um, rotation axis right around the very center of the world, just like that. And since I'm modeling the shape around the center, the origin point, it's going to rotate about the center of the object, just like that. And I'm using instance, and I've used a uh, 72... Uh, instances of this box rotating about the very center and so you can play with your own settings but this has worked for me and so now that since they're all instances it's not you know slowing down my system at all because they're all just copies and that also means what you can do is what I'm doing here go into the editable poly and edit it and it updates on every single instance so I just, uh, you know, scaled down the edge of one of those boxes and it scaled down every single one. And so I generally set all my objects to the gray color and I have a specific naming convention I use. That's good practice to get into. I call all my objects OBJ underscore and then an appropriate name. That just, you know, helps clean up the scene a little. And I thought the knob was a bit too small so I made it bigger. <laughs> And now I'm just going to have to scale up all those little boxes until they're visible again. And I think we're getting close. This pretty much looks like the shape I was after. So we are about ready to go into Photoshop because we need to make the dial image. But before I do that, I noticed on the reference image there's like a little inset where the dial like where you turn the dial and line the numbers up so just to do that I've now collapsed or not collapsed the turbo smooth but rather uh, deleted it and then just M smooth the object which achieves a similar shape but we have all polygons now and so this is really easy to do uh, edge extrusion like that so perfect time for Photoshop